All right, give it up for John Cook, guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I started studying, um, I became fascinated with stories at the age of six. I would ask my dad to tell story after story because he's a great storyteller, and there's something mesmerizing about stories. It made me wonder, what makes a good story great? Think about the last time you heard a great story. This makes you feel good. It makes you feel at peace because stories remind us of who we are and what we want out of life. I started studying stories about two years ago, and it's fascinating to me how we can craft and grow these stories to become amazing masterpieces. In fact, you might have heard it said before that storytelling is an art. And for some of you, you might be thinking, well, that sucks because I'm not exactly artistic. That's okay. Storytelling is an art, but it's also a science. And what have we learned? Science can be hacked. There are four base chemicals in our brain that can be activated by certain pictures and stories and experiences. We can turn storytelling into chemistry class by mixing words and phrases to create these emotional responses in the brains of our audience. So who wants to talk about sex? <laughs> oh, we're not going to talk about sex. But as soon as I ask that question, your attention is locked in, right? It's because that's the first chemical, which is dopamine. And dopamine focuses on those most important raging interests that we have in our lives. Those things that as soon as we hear the weird word across the room, it catches our attention, like someone asking about sex. Did you know that dopamine is the exact same chemical reaction we experience from somebody using cocaine and somebody using social media? Dopamine is what we experience when our phone vibrates or we hear our email alert or our Facebook notification pops up. It's one of the strongest chemicals that our brains could possibly experience. And stories that activate dopamine focus on those burning questions, those, those pressing problems, those most interesting burning desires that we have. So our stories about love and romance and success and power and purpose are so inspiring to us. Think about the last time you got an invitation in the mail. Remember that feeling where like somebody wants me to be at their special event? That's the second chemical, oxytocin. Oxytocin is a love chemical. It's tied with relationships and being a part of something better and bigger than ourselves. It's what bonds us together to do something extraordinary. It's, it, it's a, the chemical and experience of protests and manifestos and declarations of independence. There are ways we can activate oxytocin we focus on words like community, belonging, and acceptance, and loyalty, and trust. Now, you're probably very familiar with our third chemical, serotonin, because we live in Colorado. Over 300 plus days of sunshine activates serotonin in our bodies and help us fight off depression and anxiety and loneliness and worry. And with serotonin, it also gives us permission to dream about the way things could be, not just the way they are today. Think about Dr. King's famous speech, I Have a Dream. There's a good chance that his brain was overflowing with serotonin because he was dreaming about the way things could be. We can tell better stories when we focus on those dreams that we want to come true. It's why fairy tales and make-a-wish stories and, and even TV shows like The Biggest Loser are so inspiring to us because the world could use more happily ever afters. Now let's talk about the fourth one. When you lace up your shoes to go running, you know you're just going for a run. But after a mile or so, your lizard brain inside says, well, I'm being chased. And so you start running faster, and you get this adrenaline rush, and you keep running, 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 and then you stop, and you get that amazing runner side that's just really, really appealing. And so that lizard brain reaction and the, the adrenaline and, the, and all of that is connected to endorphins, that fourth chemical. And our brains want to experience endorphins, and they sense adventure and excitement and mystery. So when it comes to putting together stories, we, we all have these dragons and demons we want to slay in their own forms. So we crave adventure. So what's a an, an, um, quest or a mystery or adventure, something that we can share through our stories? Because if it isn't curious to us, then what's the point? When I write stories, I try to uh, activate and, and focus on which brain chemical is being activated in my readers' brains. And it's not, the goal is not manipulation. But it's to create stories we want to feel, because we'll forget details about a story, but we won't forget how a story made us feel. And if you want to create a story worth sharing and feeling, you need to know what our brains are craving in the first place. Because I have a dream of a better tomorrow where everyone has a story worth sharing, and I want you to join me in that quest.
Thank you.